Hello friends! Today, Pika and Snuggles will be sharing a story with you called Miss Mingo and the Fire Drill by Jamie Harper. It's Fire Safety Week, Miss Mingo announced to her class one Monday morning in early October. We'll be learning what to do in case there's a fire. My Grammy had a fire, Alligator said. It was in her frying pan. The smoke detector went off and it was really scary. And my French toast got burned. But I ate it anyway. Everyone agreed it sounded very scary. Panda started barking. Elephant trumpeted. Bird growled. Animals use a number of defense mechanisms to protect themselves from danger. Many of them make loud, harsh sounds to scare off predators. And monkey honked. I'm afraid of smoke detectors, he admitted. What's wrong with your nose? asked Bird. When danger threatens, the proboscis monkey honks loudly and its large, fleshy nose swells and turns red. But before Monkey could answer, the room started to shake. Elephant was stomping his feet and flapping his ears. I'm afraid of fire trucks, he cried. Frightened elephants stomp their feet, flap their ears, and trumpet. Younger elephants may push their ears way out to the side to appear more threatening. Now, now, let's simmer down, said Miss Mingo. I know fire can be scary. Just thinking about it makes me want to hide behind my friends. But I know I have to follow the rules when there's danger. So today we have a visitor coming who will teach us how to be safe and well prepared. Flamingos move in large, tightly packed flocks, making it easier for them to spot lone predators. At that moment, a very big bear entered the room. Good morning, he roared. Snake hissed loudly and puffed up his body as much as he could. When threatened, the hognose snake inflates its body to resemble a cobra. It also flattens its head and hisses. Pig darted away from the bear and dove under Miss Mingo's desk. No need to be afraid, Miss Mingo reassured them. It's just Chief Grizzly under all that gear. A startled pig will run away and then quickly turn around to face whatever frightened it. If necessary, it will charge its enemy and use its tusks to attack. The chief removed his mask. Firefighters need to wear all of this to be well protected, he said. It's called turnout gear, Frog said proudly. It can weigh up to 70 pounds. It didn't take long for the class to warm up to Chief Grizzly. On Tuesday morning, Miss Mingo explained that sometime soon there will be a fire drill. When? asked Narwhal. I don't know, answered Miss Mingo. But don't worry, we will practice and we will be ready. She listed the steps that they would need to follow. Stop everything. Get in line with the buddy. No talking. Follow the primary route out of the building. Go to a designated spot outside and line up. First, they practiced lining up. Alligator insisted on being the leader. Koala brought along a snack. And everyone was talking. Remember, said Miss Mingo, everything stays here in the room. Even my eucalyptus, asked Koala. I can't leave it behind. Koala was so upset that he started rubbing his chest and growling. P.U. exclaimed Alligator. What's that smell? 
she dropped Koala's hand and ran to the end of the line. Koalas howl and wail when they are upset. In some aggressive encounters, the male koala rubs his chest. The glands there release a strong, musty odor. Oh my, said Miss Mingo, opening up a window. Why don't we practice some more? Outside. Today, we will take the primary route to get outside, Miss Mingo said as they left the room. That's the most direct way out and the closest to a building's exit. The secondary route, announced Frog, is just another way we can go in case we can't use the first one. Miss Mingo gave him a nod. There was lots of noise as the class made its way through the halls. Primary route. Secondary route. Home room. Art room. Music room. Library. Computer center. Gym. Nurse's office. Principal's office. Water fountain. Designated spot. Girls' restroom. Boys' restroom. Finally, Miss Mingo's class made it to the meeting spot outside. Miss Mingo called each student by name. When Panda didn't answer, she scanned the schoolyard. It didn't take Miss Mingo long to spot him wedged in a tree, all curled up. Panda! Why aren't you in line? I'm scared, Panda said. What if I'm all alone in the bathroom when the alarm goes off? No one will be left behind, said Miss Mingo. The teachers and firefighters will check the whole school. They'll tell us when it's safe to go back inside. A panda escapes danger by running away or climbing a tree. If trapped, it growls and swipes with its paws or simply covers its face and curls up into a ball. On Wednesday, Miss Dillo, the lunch monitor, came to eat with the class while Miss Mingo ate in the teacher's lounge. Suddenly, a loud sound ripped through the classroom. Excuse me, said Hippo, wiping his nose. It's the fire drill! yelled Cockroach. No, no, it was just a sneeze, cried Hippo, but no one heard him. Giraffe was so frightened that he tipped over his chair. Stop! Everything, please, Miss Dillo said. Cockroach was hissing loudly, which made Centipede mad. If faced with danger, giraffes can deliver a deadly kick with their front legs powerful enough to kill a lion. Their speed also helps them to escape. Cockroaches attack other insects by kicking with their legs, which are covered with sharp bristles. Centipedes defend themselves by pinching with their back legs or biting with their front fangs. They can escape a predator by simply shedding the legs that are being held captive. New ones will grow in soon. Stop! Hippo yelled. It isn't the fire drill! It's a real fire? Alligator screamed. Miss Dillo rolled herself into a ball. Alligator thrashed her tail wildly. Thwack! To stay safe, the three-banded armadillo rolls up into a grapefruit-sized ball, 
completely enclosing its body within its leathery plates or armor. A mother alligator defends her hatchlings against predators by hissing, chomping her jaws, and using her most powerful weapon, a thrashing tail. Everyone stopped to watch Miss Dillo fly across the room, right into Hippo's mouth. Pelican smacked him on the back and out popped Miss Dillo. She rolled out of the classroom just as Miss Mingo returned from lunch. Messy me, Miss Mingo cried. Friday morning, students trickled into the classroom. Miss Mingo reviewed all they had learned about fire safety one more time. During the morning meeting, a siren blasted and bright red lights flashed. It's here, hollered Pig. It's the fire drill, Octopus cried. He squirted a cloud of ink into the room. An octopus squirts a cloud of ink to confuse its enemies and then dashes away under cover of the smoky screen. But the class stayed calm. Narwhal helped some of his classmates to the doorway where students began to line up with their buddies. Miss Mingo led her class out of the room and down the hallway. Everyone protected their ears from the loud sound. There was no talking, there was no running, and no one stopped at the cubbies, although Alligator tried. The students were just about to exit the building when they found Chief Grizzly blocking the entrance with a sign that read fire. He smiled and then winked and they knew that this was a special test. Frog nodded and the class filed out using the secondary route. Outside, the class formed a perfect line and stood in perfect silence while Miss Mingo called out every name. They were the very first class to be ready. Miss Mingo was so proud of her students, and so was Chief Grizzly, who rewarded them all for a job well done. The end. Thank you for sharing today's read aloud with Snuggles, Pika, and myself.